Hello, in this video we will look at the intermediate value theorem and why you should care about it. What is the intermediate value theorem? It's a consequence of a function's continuity. Let me give you the official formal statement of it and then I'll tell you how you really need to interpret it. So all you need is the function to be continuous on a closed interval. So that means continuous at all the points on the inside and including the fact that it needs to be continuous at A and B, the two endpoint values. If that's the case, one more thing we need to be true. We need the value in to be something that is in between F of A and F of B. This is assuming here that F of B is bigger than F of A. Okay. And we can't have F of A equal to F of B. We can't have that. All right. If that's the case, if those two things are true, then the following is true. There must exist some number, C, that's in between A and B. With the property that when you plug C into the function, you get that capital N number. What does this mean? That's the official statement of it. What does it mean? A picture's worth a thousand words. So here are the thousand words coming from this picture. We have A and B are X values. F of A and F of B are Y values. Here in this case, F of A is smaller than F of B. It doesn't have to be that way. And N is any random guy who's in between F of A and F of B. What this is saying to you is that you should be able to be able to uh, plug an X value in to get to any value that's in between your two Y values that come from your endpoint. There shouldn't be any way of not being able to do that. It doesn't tell you how to find that value. It just tells you that you're guaranteed that there is some X value that when you plug it into your function, you can get any particular Y value in between those two guys. Um, it doesn't even say that it has to be just one. It could be more than one. Um, if I pick up, if I move the, uh, the number down a little bit, capital N, there's actually three places where if you plug them into your function, you get that in capital N value out for your Y value. Okay, guaranteed. Doesn't tell you how to find it. Okay, and um, but it does tell you that there exists. There is. There's a chance that um, there will be a, um, a value that you can get to. Um, by um, there will be a value that's X that you can plug in to get to any value of Y in between those two values. There. Why do we care about this? It's because we can use it to find roots. Take this capital N and shift it down to zero. And have the left endpoint give you something that's less than zero. The right endpoint give you something that's more than zero. If the function is continuous, there's no way you can do that and not go through zero. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be that F of A is the smaller guy. It could be flip-flop, vice versa. All right, so those are the words, but we need pictures. Let's go to the next slide for the pictures. We have um, on the left, we have the F of A is the bigger guy and F of B is the lower guy. And we're interested in saying that um, N is the actual value of zero, it's the X axis. So how could you possibly have a continuous function that will start above the X axis, in below the X axis, and not go through the X axis? It's not possible. In fact, it might do it more than once. As long as your function is continuous, you can't jump over the x-axis and end up down there by the time you get to b, and vice versa. If you start down below the x-axis by plugging a in and getting f of a that's negative, and you end up with b, plugging b in and get f of b that's positive, you have to go through the x-axis maybe more than once. It's guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem. So, we just stated here officially, if f of a is greater than zero and f of b is less than zero, and the function is continuous, then for sure you'll be able to um, say that there is at least one root other way around. If f of a is negative and f of b is positive, and the function is continuous, then for sure you can say that when you have these conditions, the intermediate value theorem will guarantee that there's at least one value that will when plugged into the function, ends up as a zero. That's, that's the root of the function, guaranteed. Okay. 
Let's see it in action. Uh, here's a function, cubic. And here's an integral, negative 2 to negative 1. Very small integral there. And we want to plug in negative 2. We want to plug in negative 1. And we want to say that one of them is positive, the other one's negative when it comes to plugging them into the function, but the y values are positive and negative, so therefore, somewhere in between there, you got to have a root. So let's plug a negative 2 in. Cube it, you get a negative 8, so you get a negative 16, uh, plus a 4, um, plus a 2, and you end up with a negative 10. Put a negative 1 in, cube it, you get a negative 1, times a 2, negative 2, plus a 1, plus a 2. So, you end up with a 1. When you plug in negative 2, you're getting a negative 10. When you plug in negative 1, you're getting a 1. So, you're starting off below the x-axis. You're ending up above the x-axis at least once. We don't know where. I don't know what kind of number between negative 2 and negative 1 it is, but I am guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem that there is at least one of them that when you plug it into that cubic, you'll get a zero. In fact, we can go to decimals and find it. <laughs> um, uh, see a picture of it, at least we won't be able to find it. All right, so here we go. Um, second, second example with some trig involved. This function is set up not to be equal to zero, but you can smooth terms over. The interval that we're interested in is zero to pi. So we'll plug a zero in. We'll plug a pi in, and we're interested in knowing where this function is equal to zero. We're talking about the, the left-hand side function. So um, zero is nice and easy to evaluate at. So 2 times the sine of zero minus 3 plus 2 times zero. But the sine of zero is zero. 2 times zero is zero. So you plug a zero in, you're getting a negative 3 out, starting off below the x-axis. You plug a pi in. Sine of pi is still zero. Um, two times pi, and then a negative three. So we gotta recognize that two times pi is more than three in size. So when you take a negative three and you add two pi to it, whatever it is, it's positive. You know, because pi is about six. I mean, the pi is about three, and if you double that, you get about six. So six minus three, this guy, whatever it is, is positive. Two pi is bigger than three. So Zero gave you a negative y value. Pi gave you a positive y value. Somewhere, don't know where, somewhere in that interval, though, from zero to pi, this particular function is equal to zero, meaning that the original equation has a solution. Okay, the intermediate value theorem. It's used for more than this, but this is one application of it, and it's a consequence of being continuous. Uh, what, what, what allowed us to be able to say all this is that the function is continuous, although I never stated it. These are continuous functions. A polynomial is continuous everywhere, especially on this interval. And um, this combination of continuous functions is continuous um, everywhere. Um, the, the, the negative 3 plus 2x is a polynomial. That's continuous everywhere. Sine of x is continuous everywhere. The combination will be continuous everywhere. So um, it's that continuity that allows you to be able to then use the intermediate value theorem, IVT for short, if you ever see me abbreviate it. Okay, thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, and I'm happy to help you through this journey, Calculus 1. Um, please uh, reach out if you have any questions, uh, like and subscribe. I'm putting together a workbook for Calc 1. I have one for Calc 2 and for Calc 3. Got to put together one for Calc 1. But, um, but yeah, this is the series of videos. This ends the series of video on continuity. We have a previous uh, set of videos on limits at infinity, and uh, we're just going to continue on throughout the class making videos, lecture type videos, explaining the concepts. All right, thank you very much. Comment down below, like, and subscribe. See you in the next video.